Welcome back to the Ram Report. This is our final report here for the 2013 edition of the Race Across America, powered by Train. I'm Dave Toll here in our Denver studio, and we're happy to report that our final finisher has come across the line and punched her ticket. That is Cassie Schumacher, who finished in 12 days, 18 hours and 57 minutes. Well, throughout the last two weeks, we've had a chance to talk about a lot of the records that were in the balance, and now that we can finally put the final chapter together, there were four world records set at this year's Ram. The most notable, I think, would have to be Christoph Strasser going under eight days for the first time as he completes his race across America in seven days, 22 hours and 11 minutes. That's an average speed of 15.58 miles an hour. No one has ever ridden their, ridden their bike across the country faster than Christoph Strasser. You have to go all the way back to 1980 six to find our previous solo men's record. That's Pete Pensier is a legend in the sport of ultra cycling at eight days, nine hours and 47 minutes. In our eight-man team event, Team Viasat has held that record. It actually just goes back to last year, 2012 edition of the Race Across America, where they rode across the country in five days, five hours, and five minutes. As Team Allied Forces now has that mark, the world record five days, three hours, and 45 minutes, an average speed of 24.19 miles per hour. Congratulations to that combination of uh, United Kingdom and American-based riders on that Allied Forces squad. Two-person female under 50 category, it's the Power Pedals and Ponytails team of Casey Darden and Danny Grable. They rode across the country in eight days, two hours, and 35 minutes, an average speed of 15.22 miles per hour. You have to go back to 2007 to look for that ride from Team Phoenix. That was Janet Christensen and Nicole Honda who rode across the country the previous mark at eight days, 18 hours, and 57 minutes. Our final record that was broken is in our two-person mixed 50 to 59 category, and this is the Flying Jays, Joel Southern and Janice Sufelt. They were clocked at six days, 21 hours, an average speed of 17.87 miles per hour. They just shattered the previous record that was held by the Riding Against Diabetes team of Terry Dutton and Patty Riddle. So a new mark going days under the previous 11 days, 19 hours with a six day, 21 hour and 48 minute trip across the country. That's an average speed, once again, of 17.87 miles an hour. It's very notable that Joel Southern now has set more records than any other human being at the Race Across America. He really is one of our grand champions. Well, I think as we wrap up the 2013 Race Across America Powered by Train on many metrics, this has been a tremendously successful event. I know there's going to be a lot of people looking to get into ultra cycling themselves, and one of the great ways to do that would be at one of our Ram Challenge events. There's four more of them coming up this year. We've been really impressed by what's happened on our Facebook page. It's been great having so many of you following along. It's going to be even better next year. We really look forward to increasing the coverage and getting more of these stories to you as uh, this is really how the race across America was always meant to be. It is a people's race. We're anticipating registration for the 2014 Race Across America to open up in mid-July, so keep your eyes peeled out there. We'll look forward to seeing you on the start line in Oceanside. We're going to take a few minutes and look back on what was an epic, epic trip across the country for our solo men, our solo women, and all of our teams. This was a Race Across America that we'll remember for a long, long time. Well, we couldn't have asked for better conditions that what, than what we had in Oceanside, California, as there was a light wind, temperatures just a little bit under 80 degrees, as this iconic American surf town was the host. Uh, a lot of our teams arrived early as they had preparations that took many, many years, and everything comes together here. As we rolled out on the bike path, it was a neutral start for the first few miles as the riders had an opportunity to get their wheels underneath them. This is a good look at the man who made his mark this year, Christoph Strasser. Great to see so many people on bikes supporting the event out there this year. And As they dropped down the glass elevator, it was going to be critical to get through this sector of the course as we're moving into day two now as quickly as possible as the heat was uh, forecasted to be off the charts. It didn't quite work out to be as ridiculously hot as we were worried about. As we take a look at last year's winner now, this was one of our big favorites coming into the event, Rito Schock, the Swiss rider. Uh, amazing to see what this man 
man can do. When the road goes uphill, he climbs like an angel. As we take a look at the 120-pound, 5'3", Rito Shok, making his way now into day two of his journey across America. The transition from day into night is one of the more dangerous times to be out there on the road. The support teams, you can see, protecting the riders as they try to shepherd them across the country as safely as possible. You really do have to stay focused. It is so unbelievably hard to continue mile after mile. Climbing out of Monument Valley, you get the feeling the race really changes at this point as we're going to start putting some major altitude underneath their wheels here. This is going to be the toughest section of the race for a lot of our riders is if you're not a climbing specialist, you're going to find out what the Rocky Mountains are all about as you're going to be in the pain cave. Shauna Hogan was, is the undisputed queen of the race across America and just goes to show you how each year is a different story, unfortunately. And Shauna Hogan had to drop out of the event with a respiratory problem. And for every door that closes, another opens. As Maria Parker took advantage of that situation and ends up riding her way into the record books. Our solo women's winner here. And what an attitude this woman had. We talked about the crash with her support vehicle earlier in the race. Everyone had figured that uh, Maria Parker was going to be pulling out of the event as we take a look at her and Cassie Schumacher here. These are two of our women that actually finished the race across America this year, and that's the woman who won. This is Chris Ragsdale. Chris is uh, one of the American riders who really impressed us this year with his grit and resolve, and here he is climbing up Wolf Creek Pass right now. This has got to be one of the most beautiful sectors of the course as well, as you can see how much elevation they're putting behind them here. Chris Ragsdale really has been one of the spirited characters of the race this year, as he rode his way up into the spot of top American in our field. Getting a look now, this is where, to be honest, Ram dreams come to die in Kansas, as uh, if the winds are not going your way, uh, it, it, sometimes it's not about the preparation, as it's about a little bit of luck is required if you're going to win the race across America. And there's a man who had more than a, a little bit of luck this year, the record-setting Christoph Strasser. And this really shows you what it takes, as uh, any sane human being would be jumping off of their bike in a rainstorm like this, but not Christoph Strasser's. He continues to keep the accelerator duct tape down on the floorboard here, and this is what it's all about. This right here, this image defines what a champion is. We really did hit all of the extremes. There was wind, there was rain, we had intense heat earlier in the event. And there is no question that if you're going to win this event, you've got to get through Kansas on your A game. Now, it was a record-setting race across America as we look at Team Allied Forces. These guys were absolutely amazing. Not only, and this is a good example of how hard they raced, these guys charged across the United States here. The intensity that we're looking at was only matched by the passion and the joy that was shared as they made their way into Annapolis. This is a really interesting team, as we've talked about throughout our Race Across America coverage. Half of these guys are American, the other half come from the United Kingdom, but they certainly came together to make their mark at the Race Across America this year. That is our record-setting team. And they waited around because their buddies from Walter Reed inspired us all. This is a, a team that not only has raced their way across America, but they have certainly put some smiles on faces along the way. With all of the servicemen that are coming back uh, from war overseas wars right now, we're going to see more and more guys and women getting involved in this sport. And I have a feeling that this Walter Reed team, we're going to see some of these riders coming back and doing the event solo next year. Moments like that, that's exactly why we do the Race Across America. We wouldn't be able to do it without the support of tremendous sponsors like Train. Train celebrated its 100th anniversary this year by combining its unstoppable reliability with the world's most unstoppable athletes as presenting sponsor of Race Across America, proudly powered by Train. Traveling alongside the Ram cyclists were the Train Endurance Team, Allie and Tori, two college students who won a national competition to serve as Train brand ambassadors throughout the race. They drove the train car from the start to the finish line and through 14 different timing stations to cheer on racers and support crews that deliver train gear to spectators. The Train Endurance Team also awarded three racers with the first annual Train Unstoppable Awards for demonstrating unbelievable endurance in the face of adversity along the course route. You can read more about their 3,000 mile journey in support of the Race Across America powered by Train at facebook.com forward slash train. 
I want to thank Syntase for their involvement in their incredible aerodynamic cycling equipment, SQ Lab Saddle Technology, the City of Oceanside, Primal Premier Cycling, the great beers from Sierra Nevada, Track Dallas for the live tracking website and app, such a useful tool for all of us. Thank you to Subaru for the media team support vehicle and a special thanks to Cardo, communication in motion. Stay tuned and connected to the website and our Facebook page as we'll be doing video updates throughout the year as we get ready for the 2014 Race Across America. For everyone here, I'd like to say thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you next year.